Philippines. Chris, good morning. Good morning. Well, good morning I don't know what time it is there in Portugal, you, but uh, thank you for joining us today. Again, Chris, off camera earlier, we were talking about how there are so much more concerns other than COVID here. For one, we're tackling inflation here in the country, for, uh, in particular, elevated levels here. How is that affecting, affecting the appetite here from British investors? And does that in any way offset potential interest after a few economic legislations were made in the last administration? Yeah, look, I think the British investors are very much encouraged by, obviously, the uh, round of uh, legislation was passed uh, towards the end, obviously, of the, D of the Duterte administration. Uh, we were very keen advocates for that. We'd like to see that further continuing. Uh, I think British investors are also looking to see it and they're hoping, and that's been one of the pronouncements from the new Secretary of Department of Trade and Investment, obviously, Secretary Pasquale, that one of the priorities is going to be the ratification of RCEP. Mm -hmm. uh, we consider that to be a very important development. Uh, and the reason for that is, and it's one of the key points, we see mm -hmm. the Philippines not only as an important market for investors and doing business, but also as a gateway to Southeast Asia. So we're looking to see the continuing further liberalization of the economy and obviously hoping to see within one of the points being mentioned is that ratification, and obviously the Senate will do that very quickly once they obviously resume, I think, which is on the 25th of July after the SONA. Okay, Chris, how confident are you that that might actually happen here? Because, you know, we do have several legislators saying that, sure, we do want to be part of RCEP, but now is not the time, especially since the competitiveness of the Philippines. We, we haven't recovered to such a level where we could be competing with what they call the elephants, uh, like China or, or other countries. Well, I think the case is that there is always going to be this great opportunities. And if you look at uh, RCEP and that program, Diane, I mean, I think the only three countries remaining to, to ratify, if I'm correct, is the Philippines, Indonesia, which I think is progressing, and possibly Myanmar. So I think what we have to look at these things is the opportunities is now. Uh, and countries have signed up. And let's not forget, I mean, the Philippines can compete. I mean, I think there are areas that we can compete in very well. And, and I think what we're looking at here is really a signal. Uh, and I think it's very good that Secretary Pasquale, I think also NEDA has made the point that they wish it to be ratified mm -hmm. as well. So definitely there's an urgency there. And I think this is the time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yes, we need to help and improve and work, and obviously on agriculture, but at the same time, I think the opportunities to be taken is, is now at this moment. Okay, again, Chris, like what you mentioned, much of the contention here regarding RCEP uh, zeroes in on the agricultural sector, a number of producers, of course, contesting our potential membership to RCEP. What do you think is going to be the challenge here for President uh, Ferdinand Marcos Jr., considering especially that he appointed himself as uh, Agriculture Secretary? And what, how big of a task is it for him to ensure food security, uh, considering the times that we are in at the moment? Look, I think it's very interesting, obviously very important that President Marcos has obviously assumed for now uh, the role of agriculture and obviously he clearly sees that as an important focus. Um, and I think it is important, I mean obviously inflation is a factor and obviously food supply. I think he's also mentioned the need to keep obviously uh, imports to obviously help in terms of that inflation. And in that note, let me just add, the role of uh, British companies. We had a meat mission in May, and I would just like to say that obviously British pork, for example, is already up over 46% in terms of exports to the Philippines for the first four months. And I think these things will help also to bring down the inflation. Uh, but I think also in contrasting with agriculture, it's the continuing need which has been highlighted to continue to do the investment and see the economy grow. Now, obviously, they've, they've tapered down the growth rates uh, from previous figures, but it's still uh, to get back to those pre-pandemic levels. So, one, I would just summarize, yes, food security, but I think also he's highlighted and obviously 
British companies are there to assist in terms of certainly on the supply of British beef and pork. And I think there's an opportunity to continue further investments, particularly in the digital economy and improve the infrastructure and make the Philippines uh, continue to be robust. Apart from RCEP, how has the ease of doing business improved uh, since you've been looking at the investment climate and particularly during the pandemic? Uh, tell us, you know, we did just report the roadblocks being faced by those deals with China in key infrastructure projects. Is this worrying for, for European or British investors at the moment? No, I'd say, look, it's a very good question. I mean, the point, I think, ease of doing business is one of the laws that was brought in. Uh, again, that's been highlighted by Secretary Pascal as one of his priorities. We did see an improvement, um, but we can see further improvements in that area. Uh, don't forget, a lot of times we're dealing with small to medium-sized enterprises, and that's one of their key considerations. It's why we always drive and look to get a very good Filipino partner, right, to obviously assist in that. I think that... European uh, and British investors are very much heartened by the passage of things like the Public Services Act, the Retail Trade Liberalization, the Foreign Investment Act. Now, we've obviously seen uh, the implementing rules of the Retail Trade Act. We're looking to follow up on the others. Mm -hmm. And that will be also part of how we see the ease of doing business. I think there is a lot of interest still in the Philippines. I think what we need to continue to do is highlight those opportunities. And as I said before, we, we're always trying to say to people, look at the opportunities. And obviously, we haven't talked about the clear talents of the Philippines, right, in terms of its human talent and, and how that's very much appreciated. Uh, but also, we want to make companies come here and look at the Philippines as a base and further project into Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. Now, Chris, earlier you were mentioning about the need to boost the digital economy and the digital infrastructure. How optimistic are you about this potential that Southeast Asian nations could actually link their uh, digital systems here? And how do you think might that improve the investment climate here in the Philippines? Yeah, look, we're very optimistic. I think the, the pandemic has shown, uh, as it's shown in many countries, but highlighted for the Philippines, is that the digital economy has been a great boom. I mean, we, we've seen that on e-commerce. Um, we're pleased to obviously have some of them as members of our chamber. And we can see that continuing to grow. Um, and also, we expect that it's going to happen in terms of documentation, in terms of dealing with, with administration. Because obviously, you know, you can see it now. If you can have a digital signature and you can roll these things out, it's going to vastly improve. Now, can there be links within Southeast Asia? Yes, of course. Um, and, and I think, and, and just come back to RCEP, let's not forget RCEP is going to be one of the, lar if not the largest trading area mm -hmm. of, of anyone. It's going to contain about 30%, if I'm not, of the total world's GDP. Mm -hmm. So, yes, and I, and I think these are areas that we've got to look at, along with, of course, we fully appreciate there is economic challenges for the new administration, but it's good to see them setting that out. And we appreciate the priorities that have been highlighted by, of course, Secretary of Finance, by DTI, by NEDA, and all the various departments. I think it's a very encouraging start. All right, so let's not wait and sit in the sidelines when it comes to RCEP. A clear push for that. Thank you so much. That was, of course, Chris Nelson, Executive Director and Trustee of the British Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines. Thank you very much.